Hey guys, we're back. So last time we left the project looking a bit like this. We've got our player in the center and we've got a background. Now our background uh, is lit using an unlit texture to allow, you know, the effect of light to come through it and just to restore it to what it used to be before we imported it into our game. Now, today we're going to be messing around with the player a little bit. We're going to just be um, adding some lighting to our player, making it look a bit interesting, resizing it and positioning it so that we're ready to start getting into the nice and juicy scripting aspect. So without further ado, let's get into this. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to go back into the scene view so we can actually edit stuff. And we're going to add a new material to this um, to this player. Because, you know, we've got all these iconic uh, characters in the video game industry, if you will. And, you know, we've got Link, we've got Mario, we've got um, Sonic, you, you know, the classics, Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, Chun-Li, Ryu, all those people. There's nothing interesting about our player. So we're going to help him out a little bit. First things first, we're going to go to here. We're going to go to our Projects tab, and we're going to go to Create. Now, we're going to go to Material, and click on that, and then we're going to go to the albedo value, which is right here, and you'll see an eyedropper next to it, but we won't be using that. So we're just going to click in the white space, and, you know, if you're familiar with whatever, Photoshop, Paint, what have you, I'm not going to discriminate if you use Paint, I love Paint back in the day, um, we can just mess around with the colours. Now I'm going to leave it at a nice vermilion, not red, but vermilion. Just to make it um, stand out from the blue dominated background that we have right here. So once we're done with that we just press enter and that is all we need to do for our material. Now quick thing, let's rename our material. So what we do here is we double click but we slow double click. So if you can hear this, it will probably be in the recording if I've uh, put the settings on right. But if you can hear this. There we go, just one click, or um, two slow double clicks. And we're just going to call this player mat, uh, just player material. And note, I was in the materials folder as I was doing this. If, um, if need be, if you saved it in under assets or something, just drag it along like this. Just like your normal desktop file, and you should be fine. Now, just drag that over to there and look at that our players looking nice and you know presentable looking ready for his date under the skies or you know whatever the uh, context behind this game is now as we can see there's something a little wrong with our player besides the fact that he's too large or she I'm gonna call him a he he's gonna be a he yeah. Um, besides the fact that he's too large and in the wrong position, which I'll just fix now. Now we just use these directional um, arrows, these little gizmos here, to position our player. Don't bother messing around with the green one because that's just going to move it up and down. If you accidentally do, just um, reset the Y position to zero just by typing zero then and pressing enter and you should be fine, no panic about that. But right now, what we're going to do is we're going to get a maybe a nice minus 5, is that? Yeah, just a nice round minus 5. And now we're going to scale down our player. So we're just going to set all these to 0.5. All of these values right here, these scaling values, down to 0.5. There we go, lovely. Let's take a look at him in the game view. So we've got a lot of space around us, we've got uh, haha <laughs> space, uh, see that, yeah. Um, but So we've got a lot of space around us um, as a player, um, just to make it a little more difficult, because we're going to be avoiding bullets, actually no no, keep it at 0.5, yeah. Keeping it at 0.5 is just about right. Ooh. So now that We've recolored, as it were, and resized and repositioned our player. 
let's get into some of the more important things like what's happening to the lighting here because if you remember we don't have a directional light anymore oh no so what we're going to do is we're going to create one which seems counterintuitive seeing that we already you know destroyed one before but um, it all makes sense in a second so we're just going to create that directional light go back into the scene view to see where it is uh, let's reset its position back to origin so zero, zero, zero. I, uh, another a really good way to reset the uh, thing is just to click on that and you don't have to you know repeatedly click zero 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 uh, let's just move over here uh, select directional lighting and move you back right over here because we are concentrating on lighting our character now because our character is not too complicated he's sort of just a blob um, we don't have to worry too much about sort of what's going on uh, just make sure that we can really see our character I mean probably be probably would have been better if I used something like a 2D sphere but Oh well. So we're just going to change the x value uh, for the rotation. Make it a nice 10 uh, because we haven't quite like uh, you know given some light to the top of our player. Now let's get some directional lighting coming from the sides. Um, so I'm gonna hit Control D is what I did. So I clicked on that and then Control D and that duplicated my light. Uh, we're going to reset that again, pull it back again, and we're just going to change the rotation around the Y. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go like this, and we're going to just look at our player till we see any changes significant enough for us to be like, yeah, okay, we'll keep it at that. There we go, we've got a nice... Uh, of sweep going in there. Now we want to keep like the effect of um, what like the scenery so we can't make this like yeah I know it's like a red circle in the sky but we can't make it um, too unrealistic, unpolished almost. So what we're going to do is we're just going to position that I'd say about 50. Yeah that seems like a good value and then we're going to duplicate that light again so we're going to click on that and press ctrl D and we're going to make this 50 and now we're going to go back to our directional light we're just going to change the color of it to match the background a bit so you know that kind of I, I want to create an effect where like there's sort of a glow coming from um, the scenery which would be really cool um, okay, yeah. so a nice oceany wash like color that should do it and then I think the intensity of that light is quite fine we're not seeing too many changes here. Um, oh yes, that's that's nice. We see a little bit of a, a hint of blue. But anyway, if you had uh, something without colours that you know conflict um, so much with the colour of the light, so say we're using red right now, it kind of conflicts, neutralises the um, effect of the blue wash, but. Take my word, it will work on your own thing. Um, I'm just giving an example of how you can position directional lighting and make it work for you in your own game. So I, I, I don't think I'm going to have too much light coming from the front. So one more time, I'm going to duplicate a light and I'm going to swivel it round on its Y by 180. So it's facing the player and we're going to lower the intensity so in the hierarchy here as you saw me do before we're just gonna turn that down and down and down 
So we've got something we kind of like. I'm just going to lower the intensity of all of the side lights to about 0.5 Yeah, that, that's looking real nice now um, 0.5 mm. Mm. Pretty even, so 0.75 and 0.75 should do actually And that is the lighting for our player. Um, now I was going to go into adding a rigid body component and other things. So I'll give you a sneak preview of uh, what we're going to do in the next lesson. But we're just sort of running over time which I've just uh, seen. So now that we've got our directional lighting sorted and feel comfortable about it. Uh, what we're going to do is... Control shift M and that's going to uh, create a new game object now let's just rename this lights I just clicked on that once and then reset oh, reset the position of lights and then make it apparent to all of these other game objects these light game objects directional lights um, also another thing for organization, uh, like, I, I kept track of it, but if you really want, you can call this like rear, you know, side, left, right, front, um, just so you know what you're sort of what dealing with when you um, get into more technical things in your game. Organization is key, because sometimes you won't be able to keep up with everything, but, you know, we learn these things and um, yeah one little side note about the um, lights that I didn't cover just a second ago is that it's probably best that we move them out of the way because we won't be messing with them for quite some time so if we go to the scene view we can see where our lights are currently and they're right on top of our player who we actually need to mess around with a little bit so just boost that up to 100 on the Y position and it should be, they should all be out of the way, but still affecting the scene in the same uh, way. Okay, so I promised you all a sneak preview of what we're going to do next time. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into add component, and now we're going to go into physics, not physics 2D, and add a rigid body component. Now let's just get rid of a couple of these things, just to make it easier for us to see this. Yeah, that seems about right. Let's take a look at our game. Let's let's see uh, how our game is running right now. Wait for it. Wait for it. Ha! Huh. Something happened when our um, when our game actually started. I'm not sure if you guys saw that because it did collide with the yes it did collide with the uh, background but something very peculiar happened with our game object we're going to find out what that is next time thank you guys for watching this episode I hope you learned a little bit about lighting and how uh, you can use it in your own project at home this is sort of just a template series, so you know, go mad with whatever you want to do, you've got a bunch of time. And um, thank you for watching the video, supporting. If you like the video, leave a like. If you uh, want to leave a comment, then do so. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.